Okay, so what we're going to do over the next couple of minutes is just begin to explore color in Illustrator. Okay, so one thing in Illustrator CS5. Now, one thing that we want to remember that in Illustrator and in these Adobe or Adobe software, often there are four or five different ways to do the same thing. But what will be the best way to do this and the most effective? Well, let's take a look at some of the options we have for color. To begin with, we come down to the lower part of our toolbar, and what we see right here is our fill, and here we see our stroke. Okay, so we can double click our fill and we can get our color picker and we can select a color. Now, we can toggle between our fill and our um, stroke and the keyboard shortcut in order to do this is X. We come over here, we see our color guide. Now, currently I am working in CMYK, so I can see this is the percentage of cyan I have. I can change my color here. The percentage of magenta, the macenta. Okay, so we can see how we can change these different percentages. Now let's take a look at another very interesting and wonderful tool and option we have with color in Illustrator CS5. So we have just this window right here, the color, and we also have this window, the color guide. We come to window if we're ever looking for this, we can come here and we can see we have color and color guide. Now, what is the color guide? Well, the color guide is really a wonderful tool because it gives you some palettes right away that you can work with. So let's come into here and change our color picker. Let's just choose a green. Why not? And what you can see here is that my color has changed. I'm going to draw a shape right here. Okay. All right. So now let's say that I wanted to get a lighter color. Okay, so we can see we have our tints and our shades. So we have, this is our color green. We see this little arrow indicating this is the color we've used. Now our tints are going to be this color lightened and our shades will be this color darkened. Okay, and we can see as it moves through also. Now let's click here. We could also click to choose a monochromatic palette, okay a left complement. So there's all of these different analogous colors. Analogous colors are colors that are close to one another on the color wheel. So these are all these different color rules that are right within our color guide for us to use. High contrast, uh, a pentagram, and monochromatic working with one color, shades. Um, and this is all, uh, maybe these words make sense to you, hopefully they do. Complementary colors, complementary colors are colors that are opposite to one another on the color wheel, okay? Um, and this is, you know, applying our color theory to the colors that we're going to use. Now, let's continue. Let's take another look. Actually, let's choose, you know, uh-oh. Let's create a different shape. And for, just for, you know, choose a lighter shade so we can see and I think actually this is the one that's just very close to. So this would be very helpful, especially, you know, if we were, um, you know, working with gradients and we wanted something that was just very close. So we open up our color guide and we can have that there. Okay. All right. So now we can also see we have this save, save, um, save color to swatch panel. Um, and we can work with the colors that appear in our swatch, but let's actually look at this swatches panel because this will be one of the other major color things that we'll use in Illustrator. So this is our, our, our default right here, our default colors. But what I want to show you, well, what's really amazing is Illustrator will always save the colors that you use in a file with that file. So for instance, let's say I have this color right here and I want to save it to my color palette. Well, I could come right here and say new swatch. Um, I can see that it's the color mode of CMYK and you can see, right, there's all these different color modes. Now, CMYK is what you would use for print. Okay, RGB is what's used in the web. So I can hit OK and I can see that my color is right there. I can double click it. I could even name it, you know, if I wanted to name it forest. Maybe you want to give it 
a color, a, a name, or whatever you want to do. And then when you come over here, you can see it clicked right there. Now, let's take another look and let's come on into here. And we can see that we have all of these. Um, I'm going to pull this up here so we can see it a little bit better. What we are going to see is that when we come in to our swatches, come down to this little folder right here, we have all of these libraries that are here for us to use. So we could come down into color properties. I could say, I want to work with very saturated colors. Okay. And I have these right here. Okay. Um, you know, I, when I click it, see this folder comes right in with this file. All right. And I can see that my color guide changes. I could also come down into here and choose nature colors. Maybe I want the beach. Okay. I could save this right to there. Okay. We could come in, we could edit our color groups. Okay. These are all the colors that we have. All right. And we can really see all of this different these different things. So what we've done in this video, and I'll get into a little bit more of editing colors and color groups in my next video. What we went over today were the three major um, windows that we use with color. And again, just to recap, we have the swatches, the color guide, and then color. Okay. And again, when we look at the color, every color in Illustrator and in Adobe for that matter, in print has a number that's associated with that. Okay. And we can see how, um, we can see this here. All right. So here's the number that's associated with it. And we can see this is CMYK mode that we're working. We can see the percentage of these colors and we can see this repeated here again, often in illustrator, there's several different ways to do the same thing. Finishing up my recap here. Okay. We've looked at our color. And this will change if we were in RGB mode, this would be different here. We looked at our color guide, which gives us a lot of different options, okay, for different types of colors to use. Now, I just clicked over on this side right here and we saw yet another window. I click here, we could edit our colors, save our colors as swatches, show warm, cool, okay. So there are even more options, show vivid and muted, muted and vivid. Okay. Um, and then when we come on in to our swatches panel, here's our swatches. We can click down in here and we can find all of these libraries of color. All right. Now we can also create a new color group and I could name my color group um, you know, let's say I was doing an illustration of a forest. I named my one color that. Okay. So now what I have here is I can make my own color group. Okay. So I could say, you know, let's just choose a color. Maybe I want this green right here. I have this selected. That color is right. As long as the color is in the fill, then I could save it right here. Okay, that color comes right in there. Now, I could come right to here. I could create this as a new color. Okay, oops, and I put that one in the wrong spot. I need to make sure that I have this folder selected. And then I can come into my swatches panel and I can select, okay, and there it is right there. Okay, so now why would I wanna do this? Well, because it's just a way to keep your colors organized. Okay. And again, the color guide really gives you some good information and different color rules and things to work with, along with some of these libraries that are already created for you within Illustrator. And then you can go out and create your own. Thank you for listening.